is radon and should you be concerned about it? Since January is Radon Awareness Month, I thought this would be a good thing to talk about. My name is Karen Rice and I am a realtor with Keller Williams Real Estate and I'm here in the studio and let's talk about radon. As a realtor, one of the most common inspection issues that arises during the purchase of a home is radon. Radon is a colorless, odorless, radioactive gas, and it occurs naturally due to the breakdown of uranium in the soil and rock. Radon can enter a structure in various ways. Among the most common ways are cracks in foundations or basement floors, sump pits, and fittings around pipes. According to the DEP, around 1 in 15 homes in the United States has radon. However, due to the geographic makeup of our region, Pennsylvania has one of the most serious radon issues in the country. Approximately 40% of homes in Pennsylvania have elevated radon. Not only is radon in the air, but it can also present itself in well water. Radon is a class A carcinogen, and it is the number two cause of lung cancer in the United States, second only to smoking. So what is an acceptable level of radon? According to the Environmental Protection Agency, they have set a threshold of 4.0 picocuries per liter as a safe level of radon per residential homes. What's a picocurie? I had to look that up. A picocurie is a trillionth of a curie. And I had to look that up, and at that point, I gave up. I'm not a nuclear physicist. I don't really care what a Curie or a Pico Curie is. I only care that the EPA wants us to have four or less of them in our home, and I'm good with that. Believe it or not, testing for radon in residential homes wasn't a thing until sometime after 1984. And how it came about is a pretty interesting and amazing story. It started with a man named Stanley Waltrus, and he worked at a nuclear power plant, power plant in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Um, the power plant had safety measures in place to test the workers as they left the building to make sure that they weren't contaminated with radioactivity before going home. Stanley set the radioactivity meters over, they went overboard. The trick to this was he was bringing it in with him. He was coming into the plant already radioactive. Naturally, this was a little bit uh, baffling to the supervisors at the plant. So they launched an investigation. Long story short, they found out that Stanley's home was way radioactive. It was over 700 times the threshold of 4.0 picoliters for radon in his house. The radon level measured at 2,700 picoliters. This was astounding. Naturally, the family had to be evacuated from the home, and the EPA set it up as a temporary laboratory where they measured the radon and the disintegration of the radon and tested various mitigation techniques. Eventually, the level was brought below 4.0 and the family was able to return. It wasn't until 1993 that the National Association of Realtors began uh, recommending radon testing for residential homes. Even though radon is odorless and colorless, it is relatively easy to detect thanks to professional testing equipment. And even though it is a dangerous carcinogen, there is no need to be worried should you find elevated levels of radon in your home. Mitigating radon is very easy with a, the installation of a vent system, basically, is what it is. It's a ventilation system that's installed. You might have seen white pipes on the outside of homes or a white pipe in a basement of the home. There is a gauge on the pipe so that you can see what the levels of radon are. The fan just takes it out. 
In the case of radon in the well, this can be mitigated with aeration or possibly a charcoal filter. One of the most common myths that I have come across regarding radon is that only homes with basements need to be tested with radon. The myth kind of perpetuates the idea that if a home is on a crawl space, you don't need to be worried about radon because a crawl space is already vented. But that's really not true. More than one time, I have insisted on my buyers getting a radon test with their home inspection when they were buying a home with a crawl space, and it has come back with elevated levels of radon. Mitigating, a home, mitigating radon in a home with a crawl space can be more expensive than mitigating the radon on a home with a basement because of that venting. Different steps need to be taken. I always, always, always recommend, whether you're buying a home that has a basement or a crawl space, always, always, always have a radon test with your home inspection. It's only $100 extra, give or take, and it can bring you so much peace of mind. Finally, how much does it cost to mitigate radon? Typically, in a, in a typical home, it costs anywhere from $1,000 to $1,300 depending on how much radon is there, how many suction points are needed. Usually, the higher the number, the more suction points you need. But it is a relatively small investment when cancer could be the alternative. Radon is a serious concern, but it does not have to be thanks to testing and mitigation. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Karen Rice, coming at you from the studio at Keller Williams.